All right, this little bike has been sitting in my garage for about a month. I picked this up as a package deal and got this thing for 100 bucks. So supposedly it's been sitting in the barn for like 20, 25 years untouched. I don't know when the last time it ran was. I'm guessing 20, 25 years ago. But you can see there's still barn dust on it. Just caked on it. So it's definitely been sitting for a while. Um, this thing's powered by a 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. I am not sure on the model or the year. I have no idea what this thing is. It could be very valuable. It could be worth nothing. I have no idea. But that uh, kind of looks like one of those little Honda monkey bikes to me. That's kind of why I bought it. I'm like, that thing's kind of cool. So it does have rear and front suspension. The tank on it is really cool. The design is really sleek. Like I said, it's been sitting 20 years, so it's probably pretty old. Um, engine, let's see if it turns over. I didn't even try, because it was 100 bucks. Oh yeah, it turns over a little bit. So we'll see if we can get this thing running today. But uh, yeah, pretty cool looking mini bike. I would have loved this as a little kid. In pretty good shape too. It looks to be complete. Comes with a headlight and a horn. <laughs> And then this thing does have a little clutch on it. <laughs> and then it's just uh, chain driven all the way to the back. So there's no belt. And then you've got the gas tank going down to a fuel filter that goes into the carburetor. And then you do have the chain adjuster right there. So pretty simple machine front brake right here and then the rear brake is down here which is locked up but uh, there is a place for a battery you can see right here as well I'm guessing that's for the lights and for the horn but I thought it was pretty cool and for a hundred bucks I could not pass it up so if you guys know what this thing is let me know in the comments because I have no idea let's see the VIN on the frame here this thing says 150480. And that's all the markings I can see. There is a Harley Davidson sticker on it, but I don't think that's stock. The headlight looks pretty nice. There's a little neutral light on there, and front fenders are chrome. Rear fender's chrome. So we'll see what happens. I figured it was time to, to work on it since it's been sitting in my garage for a month. So without further ado, let's uh, get in the garage and start working on it. All right, we got this thing in the garage. Let's start working on it. I think what we're gonna do is first focus on the engine, hopefully get that to run, and then we'll um, diagnose the stuck wheel in the back and then the brakes and all that stuff. So let's first see if we can get this thing to run. All right, let's see what's underneath here. Yep, there's a pipe fitting from the engine into here, so I'm guessing, yeah, that's just the drain. Checking it out. Let's see if there's any oil in it. I'm guessing it's really black. Oh, it's filled up all the way. Yeah, look how black that oil is. <laughs> that is some old oil right there but it's filled up completely to the top. So at least it was stored with a bunch of oil in it. Gives us a little hope here. I have no idea if this thing has compression or spark, so we're gonna find that out. But first, let's take a look at the gas tank. Hopefully that's rust free. All right, the gas tank on here is pretty cool. All right, the cap comes off. See what it looks like on the inside here. No way. That is clean. So somebody drained out all the fuel. And as you can see, barely any rust in there. That's awesome. You can see down there, there's uh, the petcock right there, and that's all clear. So we got lucky there. I wasn't uh, sure what the tank looked like. I didn't even inspect this thing when I bought it. 
So, um, yeah, that's good news. All right, looks like there's a little champion plug in here. Coming. Plug looks pretty decent. Quite a bit of carbon on there. But uh, yeah. Nothing stripped out in the head, so that's good. Let's get a little oil down there. <laughs> Pull this over slowly. Man, it's smooth. It feels really smooth pulling it over. Let's see if it has any compression. A little bit. Blows my finger off a little bit. But does it have spark? Alright, here we go. If it has spark, we'll be in business here. No spark. So I'm guessing the points are dirty. All right, so we can go around, get all the bolts off up here. It's getting held up by something over here. That's what that looks like. All right, so we've got the coil here. Let's check the grounds to that. Doesn't appear to have any broken wires or anything. All right, take off this little plate right here. Alright, so I obviously don't have the right tool for this, but uh, what we're going to do is just pound this counterclockwise. So we break that free. So then you're left with that, and you don't want to pound directly on this, because it'll wreck it. So we're going to put a socket over it, and then give it a nice good pound. See if we can get this flywheel off of here. That moved there. There we go. So the flywheel is off, and then there's the... Woodruff key right here. Cut that off. 
I'm thinking. All right, we got the cover. It comes off, and there we go. So you can see your condenser along with the points. And as you can see, the points are completely dirty. Look at all that white gunk on there. So what we're gonna do is take a screwdriver, and some WD-40, a little WD-40 on there. Take a screwdriver. I'm just gonna kinda get that gunk off there. There's a lot of it. Take a little sandpaper. Make sure those are clean. That looks perfect. All right, you can see all the wires are connected here. We've got the other wire connected here that's not broken off. So as long as our condenser is good, we should be good to go. So let's put everything back together here. Now we can get our woodruff key in there. There's a little washer. Let's be out of the way. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Will it spark? Oh, look at that. That is a great spark. Sweet. So, we have spark. Do we have compression? Test screen here. Alright, you guys watch this. We're gonna do throttle open. Pull this over. Uh oh. I think we're a little low. We've only got about 60 pounds of compression. So that's not a whole lot. <laughs> that is not very good. Sixty, sixty five pounds compression. So we're gonna let the cylinder soak for a little bit. I'm guessing those rings are a little stuck in there. 
We're gonna put a little Marvel mystery oil down there. So we'll let that sit in there for a little bit. Looks like a bunch of oil in there. The choke is right here. Yep, that's the choke. It's a little lever on the side. So that's choke on, choke off is that way. Choke on, choke off. These springs are holding the throttle up, it looks like. Alright, carp is off. Alright, let's start digging into this thing. So first we'll get these off. Carbs were just built better back then. This thing is heavy. Crack this thing open. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's see what's down in here. I think there's a little jet. And that's clear. Looks good. It's really not that dirty. Got the old brass float. Got that little plastic needle. That's crazy. Look at that thing. That is weird. Let's see if there's any gas in the float. Nope. These develop. These can develop pinholes, and then gas can get in the float and weigh them down. All right, here's our little gasket. Let's see if we can get that off. We might just leave that on. I can't get it. Come off. I don't want to rip it. I don't think there's any jets underneath there. Butterfly is working. 
Make sure we can get gas going to it. Yep, that's clear. That looks good. So carb checks out. We're gonna blow through that, clean that up a little bit, and then reinstall. And uh, we'll work on getting gas to the carb. All right, we got the carburetor back on. Um, let's deal with this fuel system here. We're gonna blow through it, make sure there's a clear passage to the tank. Make sure the cap is off here. Make sure the petcock is open. Yep, all right. I doubt this is gonna work, let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. I cannot believe that works. That's crazy. It doesn't even leak. All right, let's get this other line on. All right, we've got gas, we've got spark. Let's see what happens. See if that compression's gonna be enough. Just gonna put a little gas down there. Doesn't want to stay running and it's not uh, revving out. Wonder what's going on.
All right, we got her fixed. So what I did was twist in the, I think this is for the main jet. I twisted that in. It was running really rich because I figured with the choke on it ran way worse. So we made it leaner and uh, now it revs out completely. So that was fixed there. So you can see the back wheel wanting to spin. So the clutch is working. So this is stuck right now. Um, the brake, I believe, is stuck on. So we're gonna take the wheel off, lube everything up, and uh, we should be good to go. Um, the kill switch is working also, so that's awesome. So it looks like the back wheel isn't actually locked up. I took it off, everything's fine. It just wasn't rotating because the chain was so rusty. So we got the chain lubed up, and that's working now. But now when I start the engine, it, you hear like a squealing sound. And I looked it up online, and it's a pretty common problem. It's this little starter clutch right here. And what they say you need to do is oil the little hole right here, so it oils that shaft. So what we're going to do is just squeeze a little oil in there, and hopefully that'll lube that enough to where it doesn't make that squealing sound, because it sounds like metal on metal, and that's no good. So we're just going to continue to lube that up until that squealing goes away. All right, now listen to the engine here. See if it's still squealing. Nope, that fixed the problem, so. Oiling that shaft up um, got rid of that squealing sound, so. I've been riding this thing for like 30 minutes and uh, I think we burnt out the clutch. So check this out. The clutch just spins while you uh, give it throttle. All right, well this thing ran for a little bit and now it's kind of lacking power and the clutch seems to not be working. So we are going to do another compression test see what the compression is at. I'm thinking maybe it ran good because the oil in the cylinder and then it ran out of oil and then it was lacking compression. See what's going on. Throttle open. Looks like it's going to be about the 
saying here. Yep, right about the same. Like 65 pounds compression. Looks like an old Comet clutch, actually. So on this clutch, there's actually a set screw that holds it to the shaft. Let's get that out. I think it's right there. Hopefully this will come out of here. Surprisingly, that came. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, gas tank coming off of here. We are going to be tearing into this engine. I think it might be tight valves is what I'm suspecting. So let's get everything off car, but I don't think it is. I cleaned that thing out like five times. Actually, there's three more. One's hitting the frame, so that's gonna be fun to take out. I'd like to take the whole engine out of the frame. All right, we got the engine mounts off here. Let's see if we can move this engine a little bit. There we go. So we can get these out. Lots of carbon in there. So we'll clean all that up. Might need a new head gasket. Piston. Looks pretty decent in there. Looks like there's some oil getting by. But uh, no dings or anything on the piston. smooth. Valves probably need lapping. Lots of carbon on the intake valve. This is tapped at center right there on the compression stroke because both the valves are down right now. So what the manual recommends is that you go a quarter of an inch down to measure the, uh, the valves here. Let's first get our valve cap off here. There we go. So we will measure those quick. See what those clearances are at. I have a feeling the intake is going to be tight. Intake should be between um, five thousandths and seven thousandths. The exhaust should be between nine thousandths and eleven thousandths. All right, you can see the piston now is a quarter inch down. So now we can measure the valves correctly here. Get a feeler gauge in there. So we'll go right away to five thousandths. See if it's Gonna fit in the intake here. Do 
you like this, it's going to be tight. Hmm. Yeah, pretty sure that's pretty tight. I can't get a feeler gauge in there at all. See if I can see any gaps here. Exhaust valve is pretty tight as well. See if the 5000 fits in the exhaust valve here. Yep. So exhaust valve is not tight. Or at least not that tight. But intake valve looks pretty tight. So what you can do on this engine is just uh, grind the tip of the valve down a little bit. Just so that uh, it can have a clearance there. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. Alright, basically what you're going to do is just take a screwdriver, lift up on the spring. And then there's a little clip in there that you just move out of the way. Um, in one position, it seats the spring, and then the other one, it just slides down. So both springs are down now. We can get the valves out. So I'm just going to lift up on that a little bit. You do have to move the engine over a little bit. So you can see they're pretty carboned up on there. We'll definitely lap those in. That's the exhaust valve. So both valves were a little tight. The exhaust valve wasn't as tight, but we'll still trim it a little bit. All right, here's the intake valve right here. It's gonna grind a little bit of that off. All right, valves are now perfect. I'll show you guys the measurement once we get those springs back in, but what we can do now is lap these in, put a little valve grinding compound on there. Valve grinding compound on here. do is just quick clean up the, the surfaces of the valves. Now you can see the valves are a lot cleaner. We can do both of these at the same time. We might have to shim, a, we might have to shim them a little bit more. We'll see. grinding compound. Get all that out of there. Alright, wipe that valve off. You can see where the valves are seating. You can see the light gray line right there. All right, we got the springs back in. Let's see if the valve clearances are good here. So now, five thousandths. Oh, we're at nine thousandths right there. Um, where's the five thousandths? Five thousandths right here. Let's see if it fits into the intake. Oh yeah, just rubs. Perfect. And then we're going to do nine thousandths for the exhaust. You can see right there. And it should just slide right in here. Yep. So those are perfect now. All right, so we're going to put everything back together and see if this thing runs a little bit better. I did notice, however, on the cylinder wall, there are a couple scratches down here. 
See that? They're not too bad, but there are scratches. So if it isn't the valves, which obviously they were tight, so that does affect it somewhat. Um, if it's still low on power, we're gonna have to change out that piston. We'll get the air filter on and take it for a little test drive. Seems like it has a lot more power now. All right, unfortunately, it's uh, pretty much doing the same thing. So it's just lacking power. And I think it's due to the, the scored cylinder wall. I'm guessing it's just kind of low on compression. Just doesn't have that power it needs. I thought for sure it would be the valves, but um, I think this thing needs a new cylinder and piston. It, it was pretty scored up on the side, so I'm guessing it overheated at one point, scored that cylinder, and maybe that ring is stuck as well. So unfortunately, I think we have to end it there until we can find some parts for it. And at this point, you know, you may as well buy a new engine for it and uh, put that in there, because, I mean, a new engine is what, 100 bucks? So by the time you buy parts, a cylinder piston, you'll be right there for the cost. Got a new diaphragm here for the King Quad, we're gonna go install that. All right, we've got the Kawasaki Brute Force here. Let's get to the carb, change out that diaphragm. Let's see, maybe not. All right, we're gonna start this up and I'll show you guys what this thing's doing. That carburetor is bouncing up and down like that. It's not supposed to do it. So, what we're going to do. Let's take the diaphragm out right here and replace that. Okay, now we can get this diaphragm out. And then we can get the new one in. I made a little brass one for this. But um, it wasn't working the best, so we'll replace that quick. It's the new diaphragm with the correct jet in there. Down like this. All right, new diaphragm is installed. Let's see what happens here. No more bouncing up and down. Perfect. Pump right down. Alright, that is officially fixed.
All right, we've got some venison here that we got from the land. Some back strap. Oh yeah, those potatoes are really good. All right, there's the final product. Looking pretty good. Let's just sit and enjoy it now. You guys have to see the steak. It's really good. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on the little mini bike here. If anyone knows the model or the name of this thing, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you guys think it's not the cylinder or the piston, let me know. Maybe it's the clutch. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, definitely not the carb. I cleaned that out like four times. Um, it's getting fuel, the proper fuel amount. So I'm kind of stumped on this one. I thought it would be for sure the valves, but that didn't really seem to help. It still has like zero power. So not really sure what's going on, but um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And then um, we worked on this Saturday and then Sunday we actually we went and did a little cookout on the land. Hope you guys enjoyed that little segment. We had some venison to cook up after deer season. So I figured why not make a day of that? And uh, we went and had a little fire. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, next video, we're gonna be working on the CR125. I got the wrong bearing. So those are coming in the mail tomorrow, so. Stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. And until next time, we are out.